Hey, Kevin. What are you doing? Hi. Well, trying to take care of a little bit of mail. <laughs> Dear Kevin, I want to start a little welding shop kind of like you have. It was just something in my garage so I could play around with, with metal and maybe make some things for my backyard. But I never set one up. What do I need? That's a good question. So I thought, let me just lay out a few of the basics. You know, the very basic things you might want just to kind of get started, you know, figure out if you're going to really enjoy this, if you want to keep doing it or not, or if fire and smoke and flame really isn't for you. The first place, you know, the first thing you need is some place to weld. You know, you got to have uh, a table with some kind of metal surface on it. Now, some guys actually use like their wooden workbench, you know, like in their garage, and they'll just throw a piece of metal on top of it. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll crispy the wood underneath there if you get that metal too hot. And it doesn't really offer you a good, flat, smooth place to work. You know, because the wood will be a little warped. You know, if you put a piece of steel up there and you get it hot as you're welding, well, it'll start to warp a little. You know, then you just wind up with a bunch of little hills and valleys to work in. But this is to get started. So, any place. You know, I, I know a guy who uses a stump. That's his welding table. He uses a, a little piece of half-inch plate to go on top of the stump to weld, and then he takes that out of the way, and it's dished down inside. So if he's shaping a piece of metal, well, that's his, that's his anvil. That's where he pounds on metal to bend it. So, you know, the mother of invention, whatever you need. So if you get a weld, you got to have a welder. This is Longevity's little MIG Weld 140. This is a MIG welder. It runs solid core wire with the inert gas on it that helps shield the weld as you're welding. Real nice clean welds. Nice looking job. Or you can run what's called flux core wire. So no gas, but it has the same kind of flux on the outside or inside of the wire, depending on what you buy, as an arc welder will use. So this machine starts at about ugh, at about three hundred dollars, you know, to three and a quarter right in that area. You can pick the, these little Lincoln buzz boxes up, you know, tombstone welders they call them. You can pick these up at the big box stores for you know in the five to six hundred dollar range. Great welders to start with, even one of them. This is much easier to learn, in my opinion. This takes a little more skill, a little more trial and error to finally get it going correctly. Better for thinner metals, great to start with, cheaper. Better for thicker metals. This works outside in the wind. The flux core will work outside in the wind. If you use the solid core with the gas, no wind. You can't have wind blowing across to blow the gas away. That screws up the weld. 110 volt, use it anywhere. 220 volt, 50 amp circuit breaker. A little more power for this one. So you might have to rewire your garage a little. But again, for thicker metals, better. <laughs> so when you're welding, you gotta have a helmet. You gotta have a helmet with a dark shade in it. Normally like a 9, 10, 11, up in that area somewhere. A lot of it depends on your eyes. A lot of it depends on whether you're working inside or outside as to how dark this will be. Some of it depends on which process you're using. You'll learn all this down the road. First thing you need, just a helmet. You don't want to burn out your eyes. There are auto darkening helmets like this, or there are fixed shade helmets that just have a dark piece of glass in it. So you got, got a welder, you got a helmet, you got to have some gloves. Remember, you're working with really hot metal. So these are commonly called MIG gloves for the MIG welders, or stick gloves, because they're gauntlets, and they're really, really well insulated. These are the Pro Star series. These are my personal favorites. I uh, love these gloves. Save my skin a lot of times, no pun intended. So a good heavy pair of gloves for when you're welding, pair of lighter gloves for when you're just working, when you're cutting the metal, grinding, shaping, doing whatever else you're doing. Protect your hands, but you got much better tactile feel with these, where these are a little more clunky, kind of like wearing oven mitts. Got to have something to measure with. Tape measure, yardstick, uh, 
you know, a string that you know how long it is, you know, your hand span if you know how long it is, whatever, whatever you need, whatever you got. Use what you have rather than go buy something new. Remember, you're just setting up. Some soapstone for marking the metal. You can get this at the welder supply store. You can get it at, Har at uh, Harbor Freight. You can get it at like Home Depot in their little welder aisle right there. So soapstone. You can also use a magic marker. You can also use a Sharpie. You can use a, you know, use a pencil or a pen, though pens don't last very long. All different kinds of ways to mark it, even just with a scry, you know, nice, good, sharp line. You got to have a level. So, you know, figure out where you are, make sure everything's square and straight. All different sizes, different shapes, things you can do with them. This one actually has magnets buried in the bottom of it, so you can stick it on wherever you need it. Clamps. Got to be able to hold them together, hold the piece together while you're working on it, while you're, you're, you're getting ready to weld it. Either vice grips, you know, adjustable vice grips where you can grab the smaller things. The bigger style uh, clamps, lots of, lots of depth, you know, a nice throat on them. Tons of different styles, different types. I even use some woodworking clamps sometimes when I need that really, really long reach on it, but I don't need to go very deep. So improvise. Whatever you need, whatever you have, you can make it work. So you're going to need a hammer at some point, you know, whether it's to bang on the metal or hit yourself in the thumb <laughs> or the head, whatever. So, you know, a, a decent sized hammer, you know, about a 16 ounce or so, a ball peen hammer, ball peen, not a carpenter's hammer, not a claw hammer. Get yourself a metal working hammer. A, you know, a flat face, slightly rounded, a ball peen on the end of it. These are what, you know, this is the style of hammer you want. You get your metal, you know, you get, you get done welding. There's always a little cleanup to do. You know, so a little four and a half inch grinder. You can get the soft sandpaper pads to go on here. These last a long, long time. They come in many different grits. They come in a couple of different styles for different types of grinding. But you can also use those. with cutoff wheels. See how thin that is? So you would take your grinding pad, you know, your soft pad, off of your grinder, put this in its place, and now you've got a little cutoff tool. So instead of using your grinder this way, you would literally turn it on its edge. Make sure your guard's in place, you don't want to get it all over you, and you can make your cuts. Some of these different brands last longer than others. Some of them work better than others. You'd have to experiment a little, see which is, what works the best for you. If you're only working with little tiny pieces, you know, hacksaw rather than a cutoff disc, would work great. It's quieter, it's more precise, you know, rather than giving something a chop. But again, you're just setting up, so that'll get you started. Uh, oh, you need some place to pound on things. So you're probably not going to want to run out and buy an anvil right away, but you probably have one right there at your house somewhere. Like I said before, a, a stump, uh, a bumper, you know, the bumper on a car. Uh, how about a trailer wall? You know, the trailer wall on your hitch. You know, that gives you a nice hard place to round things off with. Improvise again. You, know, you can come up with all kinds of different ways to do things. So that'll get you started at least. You, know, you can start playing and figure out what you want to do from there. Believe me, the tools, the toys will just come in very quickly after that as you start building things up and figuring out what your space will hold, the kinds of things that you want to be doing, and what your budget will allow. So go buy some tools, have some fun, let me know how it works out for you. We'll see you next time.